Hello everyone, uh, good uh, morning, good uh, afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to a joint talk about the LibreOffice WebAssembly, the how and why, uh, which is a little bit of a journey um, for how to get LibreOffice into the browser, like for real. Um, right, so let's start. Um, that's a chat talk, a joint talk uh, with uh, me and JMG, Jan Malek, uh, who's been doing most of the implementation work and um, had some, make this half an hour worth the while. First of all, um, state of the art, or what is there today um, out there ready to use in production. Right now we have uh, LibreOffice Online, or rather Collabora Online, which is HTML canvas based browser version of LibreOffice, which is quite lightweight, um, used some tight rendering. Um, most of the um, heavy lifting and actually the LibreOffice is running on a server, um, and which also means all documents uh, are loaded there. Um, so all the rendering, all the interaction with the document, all the editing, that all happens uh, on, on the host in the data center. So uh, pros are it's um, very light on the client side, Essentially, it's just a, uh, uh, some, some images, some bitmaps to render. Uh, documents stay on premise, never leave the data center. Easy, very easy for collaborative editing because essentially you just have one document um, that uh, you need to uh, keep in sync. So there's no conflicting um, distributed system issues to solve. The cons are there's no offline mode, obviously. Um, it's relatively expensive to host, uh, and there's obviously no peer to peer editing, which means um, everything um, that is like document content necessarily needs to be unencrypted on the server. Um, some paint points um, of that architecture, like more from a um, technical side. First of all, price of hosting. So you need some rather sizable server to host that. Uh, so it's cost of operations um, beyond that um, because well, you need to run it, maintain it. It's not quite trivial um, to host and to, for example, to scale. Um, so it's usually without the, the reach of the, the conventional hobby user. And in comparison to other solution, it has noticeable costs per user, um, at least if you want to run it on a uh, more than very small scale, let's say beyond a handful of users. Uh, code and technology wise, uh, Git repo is like two separate repositories, um, but they're kind of tightly coupled. So quite often you have cross cutting changes on both the LibreOffice core the, the actual LibreOffice um, code re repo and um, the, the LibreOffice Online Collabora Online repository uh, that's using that. So what to do? Uh, the obvious idea um, was uh, why not run it in the browser, like all of it, with uh, this nifty technology called WebAssembly. Um, and we also came up with a nice acronym. So how about calling it uh, LWA for the while for LibreOffice WebAssembly? rolls off the tongue, hopefully a little bit easier than this mouthful uh, there before. Um, which is um, actually where the industry is heading. So if you look at the trajectories of, of hardware and software um, in, in the past 20 years, then you realize your phone is actually a machine um, that's comparable to what you had in the 2000s, like early 2000s, which actually was running not LibreOffice back in the day, but OpenOffice, which was not that different from size and requirements and um, uh, operating system needs uh, than what we have today with LibreOffice. So, I mean, phone, 8 core, uh, up to 2 gigahertz, 12 gigabyte of RAM on the high end. Uh, yeah, so my, my, <laughs> my, my work environment was actually much, much smaller back in the day than that. Um, yeah, and um, WebAssembly, that's kind of, but that has come a long way. It's now a, a W3C standard since the um, end of 2019. Um, um, so so why, why not just cross-compile LibreOffice into WebAssembly um, and hope for the best? Like we do uh, this cross-compiling story, we do that for Android, iOS, Windows ARM, and a number of other uh, targets for LibreOffice already. So um, largely uh, the, all the infrastructure technology and most of the work is actually there already in the code base and LibreOffice per se is really highly portable given its its age and its size. Um, yes, on top of that, um, kind of sort of probably makes sense then uh, to use browser platform APIs, wherever that is feasible, uh, which cuts out quite a bit of um, fat 
uh, out of LibreOffice, which um, for, for a number of systems comes with a lot of third-party libraries, and just um, for, for not assuming anything or not expecting anything from the system it's running on. But for browsers, that's usually, um, yeah, for example, crypto, IO, network, internationalization, that, that's usually pretty good in browsers. Good. So um, in terms of um, how to do that, how to architecture that, and, and how to attack that with a battle plan, um, what are we going to do? Um, first of all, we actually tried that already um, in 2015. We had a prototype where we tried to uh, get this cross-building going, um, but it was simply at that stage, it was a bit too early. Technology was just too young um, back in the day. Uh, M script could not even do exceptions properly. It could do it somehow, but it was uh, a massive slowdown, a mas massive increase in size, and it was not officially supported. It was a grand hack. So at the end of the day, we said, well, it was a nice experience, but it's uh, time is not right yet. So we shelved that. Right now, it seems the stars are much more aligned um, with the fact that WebAssembly is now widely supported in uh, contemporary browsers. Nothing really missing anymore, um, even threading support is kind of there not, not officially standardized but there's some the uh, firefox and chromium do have support for that there's a bit of a catch the shut array buffer currently is a default off in all modern browsers due to the suspector disaster um, so you don't have shut memory easily right now uh, if you do multi-threading but then that could obviously either be um, at least for the while um, people could be asked to switch that on or can work around with uh, message passing so beyond that, what it's doing, um, low-level cross-building, obviously, well, sort of did that already, but that, that needed finishing, um, and also porting um, to platform APIs, as I said, just to save uh, space and, and to cut out the fat and strip down this rather large monolith um, that we have now, also by not running the entire Office suite, but just writer for the moment. So the, the goal is to somehow strip it down to something like 25, 30 megabyte of a WebAssembly binary instead of something north of 100 um, that we would have for the full suite. Um, right, so further technical challenges, diving a bit deeper now uh, and the evolving landscape um, that we find. Um, first of all, what we're facing right now is some uh, usually two gigabytes, between one and two gigabytes um, of uh, memory that we have available for the runtime. Um, also, probably for practical reasons, um, as I said, it's not likely feasible to load hundreds of megabytes of uh, WebAssembly binaries and survive uh, on users' browsers. Uh, address space right now is limited to 32 bits. Um, all of that, I think, is not, not a real problem because we, we, we had that the code base as it is, especially for writer, was written in the 90s. So, so the limits that systems back in the day were facing um, it's not that different from what we see now. It's actually quite quite a bit more comfortable. Uh, two gigabyte was a lot of memory in 2000. Um, yes, I said uh, this shell area buffer is a bit of a, um, a bummer. Hopefully it will go away over time. Um, as many other things um, actually went away uh, with uh, the, the progress that we see, especially in the browser uh, and web technology, which is really... Um, the amount of money and innovation uh, spent there is really staggering. So usually things get do get fixed in reasonable time, um, at least if people use that in uh, real life. Um, threat support still being worked on. Uh, default often browsers in several ways, but usually can be turned on. Uh, so for the while, if we need multi-threading, which we will likely uh, need for 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 the for having something interactively probably go with web workers or service workers and then message passing as long as we don't have shared memory um, for, for the multi-threading. As I say, it's not, not a big deal, at least for writer, because that application is single-threaded by design when it was written in the 1990s. Um, just the number of resources here um, to link to um, for playing with WebAssembly, for debugging, for documentation. Um, for debugging support, we'll get a little bit deeper into that. Um, once we got the demo, uh, we saw the demo. Right now for, for the, um, let's say, developer experience, it's still um, probably the best um, in Chromium 
Firefox um, trailing a little bit behind there, but but it's um yeah it's still it's still a bit bleeding edge. Still a number of um, rough edges here or there, but it's broadly and, and there's other applications that have been ported and are used in production. So it's not that we would be massively trailblazing here. On the other hand, uh, LibreOffice is a bit special in a number of ways, uh, and and I do expect some unknown unknowns uh, that we will be hitting. Um, yeah, but but so far um, I think uh, as I said earlier the time is right to do that stars are aligned and i'm pretty hopeful we, we get this pulled off so now let's talk about current uh, status of the wasm builds and libreoffice the basic documentation is available in the wiki you can see the link there that documentation is really basic it boils down check out feature wasm and there in the root directory there's a readme w ASM, which describes the whole additional setup you have to use and a lot of further information about the whole stuff, uh, large linklets and everything if you are interested. What can be said about the current state is that the MScript and SDK and Qt5 uh, WSM builds is integrated in GBuilds and configured, so it's found and used, obviously. What was already developed is a static dependency resolver. I will come to that later, which more, which was the larger amount of time to get this running and in the end we are building a few uh, executables already like vcl demo and the oh ui previewer with not with the wp and you can also build some unit tests um this cl disclaimer on all of this is basically the build finished you will have something that ends but the only thing that's really uh, runnable is a qt5 uh, demo which i ported to build to have at least at the point something that actually works and is, is some starting point to say that the stuff is generally working. So for the for rest of the talk, I will want to look into the major problems I was facing during a, the development time. There's uh, GBuild with static executables. Uh, we have some strange dependency loops in the source code. We have somehow to handle the static UNO components. And in the end, even the mscript in the linking phase takes a lot of TPU time and takes generally a lot of time. And then there's some uh, outlook for the problems we have or to tackle in the near future. So basically, uh, GBuild has no support for st linking static executable. All the uh, information for link targets is in private uh, variables in make, which is fine if you have just link uh, shared libraries because they have our path and, uh, to find sub libraries and all this stuff. But for the static linking, you have to collect all the information, which is at this point not available because all the transitive information for the dependencies of the dependencies are not available. You may ask, okay, Android and iOS already uh, built a single binary, which statically linked. Yes, and there, if you have just a single binary, you can also use the, the scripts they employ, which basically just has a link of libraries built during the doing gbuilds and throws everything at the linker and let the linker figure out how to create the final result. That's fine for a single one, but not if you want to run uh, unit tests or some intermediate libraries, which are already built by gbuild. Um, so what was basically implemented is that we register all the link targets uh, in global variables. Then after all the registration, we tra traverse the whole dependency tree and fill all, all missing libraries, externals, and statics for the final executables. And also for the libraries. And as a bonus, we cache them in uh, extra dependency uh, files. So making single modules will still work after uh, this is merged. And also for the WASM linkage of uh, executables. What I've also found uh, is that uh, LibreOffice has some interesting dependency loops in its code, like uh, Calc has dependencies on the Calc UI library, and the Calc UI library depends on the Calc library. So this is normally broken up by the main module deal opening the other one, but uh, we can't do that here. So what we use here is we define the main module as the loader and everything else as a plugin, 
And so every plugin can, uh, can say, I am a plugin of the Lodo library. And for when we already traverse the whole dependency tree, we simply check uh, the final resolution if it contains any library dependencies, which are loaders, and then add the plugins to the final link stage as a dependency. This takes some time, but there's really no overwrite around. Then there is the general problem with our Uno components, which are normally the open uh, shared libraries. Obviously, we can't use that as mstripten can generally use DL open. It's a little bit more complicated, but then you're losing p thread support. So currently we went with preferring p threads over DL open and there are other problems. So um, what we are doing is basically for every component already registered, uh, every library already registered its components. So we are collecting that then know all the component libraries and create a, uh, an extra library with dependencies on all components. The code for the lookup of the libraries, which normally have <coughs> described, um, have their constructor description uh, described by name in the component file, um, has to be done now by a component map, which basically maps the name to the constructors. And this is generated by uh, a Python script, which is used also for Android and IRS. So as we already need to traverse all the executables, it's not that hard to check if the executable itself depends on the CCPPU helper, which uh, calls the mapping code generated by the native code PI. And we add that also dependency, so the final executable will be linked correctly too. Obviously, even if the, the executable just use single or very few components, you have to link everything because the, the mapping function has to contain everything. So it gets quite large. Um, then there is a general problem that uh, mstripten runs an uh, optimizing phase during link time. Um, we are have, using a little bit older mstripten version because that is the official supported version of Qt. And there's a general problem that uh, linker optimization flags <clears throat> are not really forwarded to uh, to a VASM, WASM optimizer run. And it really runs per binary for multiple minutes. And here on my uh, development environment with eight cores. And if you run those uh, linking in parallel for multiple binaries that instantly kills the machine, so what is basically implemented currently is, uh, yeah, we also already at the, also at the point when we traverse that uh, dependencies, uh, we basically declare a dependency to all previous binaries. So you have a serialized linking uh, phase uh, of all the binaries at the end. Um, I have tried to patch uh, forwarding the linker flags, but that did not turn out to really help with the time as I expected to it. So. Yeah, that's really still a major problem and I wouldn't call it a complete showstopper, but the turnaround times for linking and description is currently really, really high. And the generated binary is really still hundreds of megabytes large. So, okay, it's with debug info, but still half a gigabyte is a little bit too much. And that's not even a full LibreOffice, just the VCL demo. So I just want to give you a look out for the near future problems I will try to tackle. Yeah, I hope I can find some way to really get the link time down. Currently it's not usable. An alternative would be to start DL open usage and drop P threads instead, but that might result in, I have no idea what other problems. It's not very simple, and with DL opening, you are basically losing uh, build time symbol lookup problems. So everything then is moved into the in, uh, into the runtime, which might be other problems later. Then there's a general problem that you can can't do nested main loops because that would obviously block the browser because you can't uh, run the browser main loop from your own one. One workaround uh, is to you can it's possible to run the your own main loop in a, in a web worker, which is then an, an extra thread, and then 
transfer graphics outputs uh, to the main browser loop. Um, we will see how that if if and how that it's usable, and if that is also compare uh, working with the Qt which we are currently using as our VCL backend. What's still completely missing is all the yeah, shared binary data which is needed uh, for LibreOffice to run. We somehow have to manage uh, have to manage to build a file system, virtual file system image, which then can be loaded by the LibreOffice binary. Normally, you can add uh, files during when you build the or cross compile the C plus plus files. But uh, I don't think we can go this way at all. It's generally not a problem to add those all those extra files in an extra step. But I'm not yet sure how to collect all the data and really create that uh, file system. It's it's basically just one call to the to a Python script with all the needed files. But uh, yeah, probably something we'd have to do in post process. Then generally saying. Uh, Debugging all the stuff is a major pain. There has been some improvements lately in Chromium, and according to Torsten, there may have been some also some improvement now to the latest Firefox, which should hopefully help that you don't do not just get a backtrace when something crashes, but also you can uh, really stop inside uh, and at breakpoints inside uh, WASM code, which is decompiled. We will see how that will be running. Um, if you are more interested also in this stuff and want to see some further uh, presentations, in, I think in 2018 there was a presentation about uh, AutoCAD moving finally to WebAssembly. They have a larger uh, time scale since they tried or, uh, to move uh, AutoCAD to the web. Something crazy like uh, having a flash based AutoCAD in 2008 or something like that with intermediate steps, and I think since. Two or three years there have a WebAssembly uh, AutoCAD running in the browser. That's really interesting and shows basically uh, in more detail some, some parts I have already mentioned here. So, yeah, everything, they have the same problem with their old code base uh, that we have. So, that's from me for the presentation. Um, so, before we end, I was just wanted to show you that at least something is already running. I already said at the beginning that there's a, um, a Qt demo built by gbuild running in the browser. And I just wanted to show you that. So, this is my uh, folder where I've uh, built LibreOffice. At, in the end, you have a work deal link target executable and the Mandelbrot Qt5 example. And if you start that, yeah, you can see that it's actually running a WASM example from Qt in the browser built by LibreOffice GBuild. Obviously, there are a few more executables in that folder, but they just produce errors. So, well, thanks for listening. Okay, so let me take back the baton. Um, quick recap on um, how to build that if you would um, be uh, that daring a person, which I absolutely encourage you to, we can certainly use some help here. Um, right now it's the early stages, um, but I'm hopefully um, also getting most of what's still in a feature branch merged into master uh, for LibreOffice. So if you want to build from scratch, I start here. There's a link um, to README with some setup instructions for both MScript and, uh, and Qt. Um, so size-wise, um, it's a bit more than you would need for LibreOffice proper. So you need MScript, which weighs in about one gigabyte. You need Qt, um, which right now is only used for the demo, but might be used also for, for more, more browser cross-platform support going forward. That's about 10 gigabyte. LibreOffice itself, depending on how much of that you build and with uh, exactly which um, compiler setup, it's anywhere between 15 and 30 gigabyte. Um, so then you set up LibreOffice to cross-build. Uh, there's a configure line in the README, strongly recommended to take that. Um, anything else is probably not going to work right now. Um, just a warning, this is bleeding edge. Um, don't expect this to always work and everywhere. Uh, it really only works right now and is tested and maintained on Linux. Um, so if you hit a problem, just hit us up on IRC. Um, you see the, the channel there and the 
uh, and the nicknames. If you want to run it um, for the demo that uh, JMG was showing you, that, that's the command line there uh, for you to copy that out. Um, further information, uh, quite excellent. Um, uh, Mozilla Developer Network um, article about WebAssembly and all the APIs and integration with the browser and how to call out to JavaScript and how to call in from JavaScript and what else can you do from there. Uh, very quickly uh, for debugging, just make sure that you build uh, with enable dvg util, which is a configure line. Um, otherwise, you're not getting any source maps, so that's essentially then the assembly experience, if you like that. Uh, you can still set breakpoints, but it's um, well, yeah, it's assembly level. Um, if you enable dvg util, you get source level debugging, as seen in the screenshot. Um, and um, as I said earlier, best experience right now is at the moment Chrome Chromium. Okay, so just uh, quickly the outlook, um, what's um, the plan? Uh, we hope to have very much this VCL demo running. Um, so the first pixel in the browser as promised last year. Next step, we're gonna be cutting the browsers down, um, like really minimal writer, no other applications. Also um, only probably one or two filters, um, ODT and perhaps DocX. Um, and get the largest third party libraries that we have, which is ICU, NSS, and a number of others, where well, we will start with the largest ones, um, over to browser APIs, and let's see how small uh, we can get the, the binary. Uh, and next then, either use Qt or the, the WebSocket daemon from uh, Collabora Online to render writer uh, in the browser and purely in a browser uh, on an HTML5 canvas interactively. Go for that this summer this year. And finally, to get a demo with end-to-end -end encrypted editing of a of an ODT document uh, going, and the target for that is, let's say, LibreOffice Conference, uh, if and when that happens in autumn, uh, 2021. So this year. All right. So that's the end of that talk. Very much um, enjoyed it being here and telling you about that. Thanks for your attention. If there's any questions, um, the the channels are open. Uh, we're here in the chat um, and uh, on the Jitsi. And thanks, of course, for the sponsors, first and foremost, the Enelnet Foundation uh, and also my company, Allotropia, for uh, sponsoring that and um, paying for our time. Thanks so much. Take care.